So the last two champions at the Division Three level, 2018 and 2019, tonight here in Kansas. It, it's a surprise. I mean, obviously, just down the road, Mount Union in Alliance, Ohio, a lot of folks thought they would have that opportunity to play in this game. Uh-uh. North Central took it to them a week ago. Whitewater's been here a ton of times as well. So this is kind of new blood in D3, and both these programs are making a name for themselves. A chilly evening, perhaps to those who have traveled from afar. Normal weather for normal residents of Northeast Ohio. Cool and crisp. And the return for D'Angelo Hardy, who's got space as he takes the gap, puts on the burners, and he is gone. What a way to start a title game. A 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown for Hardy. Wow, you talk about a play that's, that this kid's never going to forget. The national championship game, the opening kickoff, and you get great blocks. You don't even get touched, and you take this thing to the house. What a way to start for North Central. I, I didn't expect this game. I know both, both teams are, are you know high scoring among their conferences. Get in the playoffs, defenses tighten up a little bit. Uh, that, that, that could be a crucial play, Mike, to, to go a long way, really, for them to win the national championship. Flags come in from both sides before the extra point from Tanner Reigns. Full start. Offense. Number 54. Five yard penalty. We'll reattempt the try. Stuart Hinman, our referee tonight, as this crew works out of the Centennial Conference, and the Cardinals get backed up for the point after. <laughs> Plenty of experience on both sidelines. Pete Fredenberg in his 24th year, going back to when this program started in 1998. He has seen just about everything as an assistant at the Division I level and here as a head coach at the Division III level. Couldn't ask for a much better start there for North Central as they take a 7-0 lead just 12 seconds into this championship game. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better start if you're North Central. And now Mary Harden Baylor in a a little bit of a predicament here. You know, you're you're in the national championship. 12 seconds in, you're down seven nothing. But uh, listen, they're they're a heck of a football team. I, Mike, I expect this to be a four quarter game. I really do. Here's a look at Coach Thorne. Had a nice chat with him this week, Mike. Winner of the 2019 national championship. His dad, John, was the head coach for 13 seasons. And this is a big college football postseason for him as well. His son Peyton yeah. is the starting quarterback at Michigan State as they get ready to take on Pitt right before the new year in the Peach Bowl. Yeah, we had a fun chat with, with Coach Thorne, and you know it, it was kind of fun talking with him about his uh, recruitment, uh, talking about Peyton, his son, of course, who plays for Mel Tucker at Michigan State, and of course I played for Mel Tucker at Ohio State, and, and so we had a little tie in there and. You know, talking about uh, how he had to sort of take his his dad hat off, right, and, and or his coach hat off rather, and be a dad for the recruitment, which was uh, just pretty fun to talk about. Always unusual to be on the other side of the pitch yeah. that you're usually the one making, no doubt. Short kick taken at the 11-yard line, and Sims is out just shy of the 25 yard line on a 13 yard return that brings the crew offense out onto the field a perfect 14 and 0 with the senior Kyle King at the helm you know it's it's been kind of funny for Mary Harden Baylor this season they played a couple different quarterbacks Kyle King and Ryan Redding King it was the starter for most of the season had a turf toe injury uh, and, and missed a couple games and, and, you know Kyle Redding who, who was really good friends with Kyle King comes in Ryan Redding, I should say, is really good friends with Kyle King. They come in and, and plays really well. But uh, last couple games, King has been dynamite. And he throws deep down the sideline and connects on his first throw of the night. Brenton Martin had single coverage, got behind the defense, and the senior makes a huge catch to move Mary Harden Baylor into North Central territory for 42 yards. And, and Mike, that's what the crew, they're going to do. They're, they're going to take their shots when they feel like they've got one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. And in there again on that first down play, they had uh, Nick Rummel matched up. 
with Brenton Martin and, and took an opportunity and made, made him pay. And Brandon Jordan, who we mentioned right off the top, started at the bottom of your screen. The throw along the sideline is complete to K.J. Miller. That goes for 14 yards to the senior who set a new program single season record this year. That is 68th catch of the season. A little bit of tempo here for Mary Harden Baylor to start the game. I, I, I would assume, you know, when you, you get a kickoff return against you for a touchdown to start the game, there's a little pressure. And, and so they're they're uh, they're taking advantage of it here and, and, and putting a little bit uh, of the foot on the, the gas pedal. Alfonso Thomas, who started his career at SMU, lowers the shoulder and goes out of bounds around the 12-yard line. You talked about the offensive numbers for these teams yeah. as well. They're amazing. Unbelievable. 48 <laughs> points a game for Mary Harden Baylor. On the other side, 55, almost 55 a game for North Central. And you just know that those numbers are going to get shrunk a little bit here in this game. They're, they, these teams, and there's no knock on their conferences, but these teams are the creme de la creme of D3. Right, so they're going to put up big numbers during the season, uh, and, and that's what happens. But once you get to the postseason, the semis and the championship things, they tighten up a little bit. Ball's on the turf, Mike. Uh, King got stuck as he was with Thomas at the mesh point there, and Tyler Rich, one of several defenders who converged as they get sent back to about the 15-yard line, and now it's third down. And well, these are the opportunities where you want to take a look outside. Right here at the bottom of your screen, that's Jordan. We talked about him in the open. And they elect to run. King goes nowhere. He's back to the line of scrimmage and then stuffed. So it's going to be fourth down and four. Brandon Greifelt, the defensive tackle. Coming in to help make the play. Fourth down. Now look to the sideline, and here comes the field goal unit. No decision. Well, a decision, but a decision it, that was easy. To take three rather <laughs> than try for six. Fair enough. It's Brandon Cunningham, the junior from Wiley, Texas. A field goal that looks relatively simple. It has not been simple for them this year. Just two makes for him on the season. And so the attempt to get Mary Harden Baylor on the board is good. And it's seven to three. A drive that started with a big spark down the sideline sputters, but the crew on the board with three on the drive. Knowles at 13 and 0 from Naperville, Illinois. Their enrollment just about 3,000. A perfect regular season. They had a little bit of help to start the postseason. Their first game against Carnegie mm -hmm. Mellon yeah. canceled due to COVID-19. Tops in Division Three at 55 points a game. And a game last weekend against Mount Union. You couldn't ask for worse weather conditions to try and throw or kick the ball there. But the goalposts the goal were, 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 yeah, but they were going sideways. Uh, and, and frankly, it, it may have helped them on a couple of their uh, field goal attempts, which were, you know, the wind was just crazy in Alliance, Ohio. Uh, watched that game and enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, obviously, Mount got off to a good start, 7 nothing, and then all the unanswered points by North Central, and here they are in the national title game. Their head coach, Jeff Thorne, who had a career in finance until about a little more than a decade ago and decided to go into coaching full time. And boy, has that paid off. Well, you you asked him on the call. You're like, so did you take a pay cut to, to take the job? Well, maybe not quite a pay cut, but uh, he, he's uh, it's paying off right now. How about that? Most college coaching jobs do not pay better than finance unless you're a fired power five football coach. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair point, Mike. Fair point. Let's take a look at Luke. Lanin, the starting quarterback for North Central, the Cardinals, uh, just a freshman. But I'm, I'm telling you folks, he's going to come on the field here in about two seconds, and you're going to think you're watching a 16-year-old high school quarterback. Because uh, he he's just got a baby face. He, he needs to put a little bit more weight on. But he plays, Mike, like a senior, a veteran. And it was really impressive last week. What an athlete this kid is. Uh, a baseball player, yeah, of course, at, uh, at Central, North Central as well. So the long-awaited first offensive snap goes to Ethan Greenfield. His run is stuffed by the middle linebacker, Akeem Jackson. 
for this offense that rushes for over 300 yards a game and Greenfield is a huge part of that. Come on, don't call him 16. No 16 year old has got that little facial hair going on here in the postseason. That's a playoff beard. <laughs> In all seriousness, he, he's played like a veteran in, in these playoffs in this season. They've been so impressed with him, uh, not just his ability on the field, but, but his ability to learn off the field, uh, what he does in terms of how much film he watches, and, and, and really in, has embraced this football team. And, and you think about it, I mean, you got to replace a Gallardi winner. Uh, that, Brock that, Rudder. Brock Rudder, yeah, it, that, big shoes to fill, huge. The Gallardi Trophy, the highest honor at the Division III level, handed out earlier today as well. A couple of finalists in this game, but congratulations to Blaine Hawkins of Central College, the winner of that trophy. So third down and 10, they convert better than 50% of the time. Defense has been quick to the ball, and that time the ball quick to the ground as the throw for Kaminsky comes up short. And so a spark on offense, or rather on special teams to start for North Central, and the offense finds itself coming off the field rather quickly. Coach Thorne a little bit frustrated maybe with that throw. There was pressure in the face uh, of Luke Lanen pretty quick, trying to get the football on the outside to his uh, top wide receiver, Andrew Kaminsky, who I'm sure, Mike, as we go through the broadcast, we'll be talking a lot about. Tanner Reigns will regret that punt. Mm. My goodness. Out of bounds, and let's see what where it gets marked out at the 22-yard line a approximately. seven-yard punt? It goes down as a nine-yard punt marked out of the 25-yard line for Reigns. Just a shank. Just absolutely missed it. And, it, boy. Uh, that, that may be on SportsCenter, uh, not top 10. Well, give it an adjustment. We shorted him by three yards. It was a 12-yard Okay, punt. 12 yards. My bad. But it does set up the Crusaders quite nicely here from the 25. King ready to throw. Uncorks across the field. Hits K.J. Miller, who's wrapped up at the 19-yard line. A gain of six on first down. You take a look at the, the offense of Mary Harden Baylor and where they rank in, in terms of Division Three. I mean, uh, near the tops in, in almost everything, including scoring, which is I mean, amazing. Nearly 50 points a game, uh, third in all of Division Three football. So this is a, the team that has an explosive offense. But again, as I mentioned, I, I, I think tonight, I, I, I don't expect fireworks. We saw some early with the, the, the kickoff return, but I, I think th things will slow down a little bit. A look to the end zone, and it goes incomplete. Nicely defended by Nick Rummel. The former wide receiver switched over to corner, and he helps knock it away. Uh, great coverage by Rummel on the outside. Plays the football, sees it, turns his head around. That is exactly the way you're taught to play the football. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of fans of uh, their professional sports teams that wish that some DBs would turn their head around like that instead of get called for pass interference. Great technique there by Rummel on the outside. Really good corner for this North yeah. Central squad. Rummel and Jake Beasley on the other side. Both of them at least six feet tall. Crew with a third down and four. Plenty of time. Throw across the middle is caught by Jordan. And he's in for the touchdown. Strike from 19 yards out. As North Central stole the show on the opening kickoff, it's 10 straight for Mary Harden Baylor Penn, well nine straight with a tenth on the way with the extra point. Well we talked about him in the open Mike Brandy Jordan who is just a phenomenal talent at, at the division three level. Uh, how he's that wide open we'll, we'll have to show you because it, it, it shouldn't happen. Kick was blocked and the kick was it, tipped jinxed it at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> so it's nine seven. So Mary Harden Baylor with the lead easy pitch and catch to Brandon Jordan for the 19 yard touchdown. Nine seven crew. Game played in 2020 due to COVID-19 as Alex discussed earlier. So when you talk about the stag ball it's so often 
We hear Mount Union because of how well yeah. they've done at this level, but here are two ascendant powers at the Division Three level. And Mary Hart and Baylor, of course, did win that championship in 2016. Overall, this is their fifth appearance, which was vacated due to an NCAA violation. So it's 9-7. North Central took the opening kickoff back 93 yards for a touchdown. A field goal and a touchdown for the crew. A missed extra point. Brings us our current score here in Canton, Ohio. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, and Alex Chappell along with you. Mike, let's go back to the previous touchdown and, and find out how, how wide open Brandon Jordan is. Here he is. He's going to run a little out and then come right back inside. And they're going to run zone coverage against him. And they're going to run zone coverage, Mike, against Jordan. And he's wide open. Dustin, that was very enthusiastic. So enthusiastic. In fact, <laughs> you knocked over the television. Yeah, I was trying to tell you, and, and thing knocked over. But, you know, that's part of live live television. So we're going to have to deduct that from your check. Team. My bad. I don't think I did anything wrong. Tell you what, what was wrong is playing zone coverage against Brandon Jordan. This crew <laughs> defense, though, has been ready to stop the run here on the second drive and the first for the North Central offense. And saw great speed from Akeem Smith, Kevon Shepard from his defensive end spot on that opening drive where the Cardinals were forced to punt. Three yard pickup on first down makes it second and seven. Lane in back to throw. He's got time on the crossing route. He makes the connection with Kaminsky, their leading receiver. The senior from Pingree Grove, Illinois, out of South Elgin High School has a first down. Boy, Kaminsky is, is really one of the top wide receivers uh, in the country, Mike. And I'm not, I'm not just talking Division Three. I'm, I'm talking all divisions. He, he's definitely getting looks. Uh, by the NFL scouts to play at the next level plays 90% probably in the slot and Does everything right for this offense? What a great teammate the coaches were raving about him Pocket holds up well Lanin has great speed as he takes off to run He's an outfielder on their baseball team Hits at the top of their batting order as well. So you so, better have good speed to be the, the leadoff hitter, right? If if they flush him out of the pocket, he is certainly a threat to the defense. Yeah, I think the bottom of that speaks for itself with just how speedy he is. Well, and, and, and what's impressive is for a freshman uh, had not played football yet with the, with the program, right? Of course, just and practiced. Just practiced, of course, in the spring. But they let him play baseball. Let him practice in the spring, and for him to be at this level, it's just, just absolutely remarkable. There has just been no opening for Ethan Greenfield. That time it was Caleb Johnson, the senior defensive end, who met him with a bear hug to bring him down. And Johnson is just going to play on the inside of here the left tackle and really doesn't even get blocked does a great job getting in there for the stop bringing up a big third down here for the Cardinals really their biggest play on offense has been laying in hitting Kaminsky on a crossing route for the first down the running lanes have not parted just yet just a three-man rush for Mary Harden Baylor a pass that floats is caught near midfield by D'Angelo Hardy who returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. He makes the grab. That's a first down for North Central. You know, it's funny. All, all the coaches, you know, talk to NFL scouts. And they come in. They're all talking about Kaminsky. And they say, who's number six? They're like, D'Angelo Hardy. We're coming back for him. Because this kid, is, as a sophomore, it jumps out, on, not only on tape, but in practice. What a, what a terrific talent. They've got two really special wide receivers. Hardy, a one-handed grab on a big third down last week. Helped keep a drive alive for North Central. Four wide receivers as Lanin lets it fly. Deep down the middle of the field, Kaminsky got his hands on it, but it was just a little bit too far for the speedy senior, who, if he makes that catch, may end up in the end zone. Boy, double covered, too, on the outside between number 16, Tommy Bowden, and number 9, Titus Dunk. And Kaminsky, he, he, boy, that's a rare miss 
by lane in on the outside when you get Kaminsky that wide open that that should be a touchdown. Well Brad Spencer their offensive coordinator said that in high school Kaminsky was so fast that there would be plays where he would touch the ball and no one would even get a hand on yeah. him. And so it was a learning process for him getting to the college level of knowing that hey people have the skill to be able to tackle you at this point. Hardy the catch gets driven backward. It takes almost four defenders to try and bring him down but his momentum brings him to about the 45 yard line. As you take a look at Kaminsky's numbers of course a finalist for the Gallardi Trophy this season didn't win it but boy what he has done uh, here, here at North Central just nothing short of, of just uh, incredible. He's the real deal. I mean he's blue collar. His family owns a piping company. He works for him in the offseason. I mean the guy is just he's a special special kid. Does it get more blue collar than that than working I in a trail? Does it? <laughs> they had third and seven earlier on the drive. Now at third and six, and a very small window closed on Corey Blair as it sailed long from Lanin. Well, in plus territory here, and they had trouble with their last punt. There certainly appeared to be some deliberation there before they made the change. Did want to talk a little bit here about Tommy uh, Bowden, who made the transition from from a uh, wide receiver to defense and got his first start Mike last week against Wisconsin Whitewater and has been they said amazing graded out really well but for a for a player to make this transition uh, I, again very impressive and great coverage there on third down. Well it's a real commitment to the team to know that there is a very intense competition at quarterback. It didn't necessarily involve him as much as he'd like knew he could get playing time at safety. And now is an impact player here in the Stag Bowl. 40 yard punt, 10 yards on the return by Miller, a 9 7 game first quarter. Welcome back to the Stag Bowl in Canton, Ohio. First quarter of the Division III football championship game. And the Division II champion will be crowned tomorrow night in McKinney, Texas on ESPNU 9 Eastern, Valdosta State, and Ferris State. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90. NCAA championships. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, Alex Chappell, our rules analyst tonight, Matt Austin. Glad to have you with us. After a punt from North Central, Mary Harden Baylor takes over and a throw right near the sticks. Great elusivity by Brenton Martin, who makes the catch. Who's had quite a college journey, a year at Clark in Atlanta, a couple at Merrimack in Massachusetts, and now a veteran with this Crusaders team. Second down and one. Both teams winners on the road last week in their semifinal matchups. And it's a run for a first down out to the 30 yard line as Mary Harden Baylor has looked to see if those gaps will open up for King who's got good size to be able to knock some juice into defenders at six foot three 220 pounds. You know, uh, Kyle is, is. You mentioned his size for his for his size. I should say he, he does have some wiggle, and they will run some design quarterback runs with him. And you know, he battled that turf toe for a few weeks uh, earlier there in the playoffs, or before the playoffs, I, sh I should say. And uh, now back to being at full strength. Good space, first down and more for Afonso Thomas. Who can carry a big workload? He's taken the ball 26 times on three occasions this year. So if that's what's needed tonight, he's certainly ready for it. He goes for 14 yards. And hey Mike, we'll see probably three different running backs for the crew. But for some reason, they say when they start with Afonso, he gets things going. Like he gets the the offense cooking, and it's a nice run there for him to pick up the first down. Well, both defenses are strong. North Central allows just 11 points a game. Down the sideline again for Martin. Well, he has had the defense's number thus far. His second big grab of the opening quarter down the sideline. Well, I was so impressed with, with Martin a week ago. 
uh, in his game uh, against Whitewater, and he just comes out here again making big plays. And we talked about it. Like, the, the crew, they're going to take those shots. When they feel like they've got a one-on-one, -on man-to-man opportunity on the outside with no, no help over top, they're going to take those shots. Already over 100 yards receiving on a 38-yard catch. That sets up the crew inside the red zone. The defense swarming and corrals the attempt for Thomas to limit him to no gain. Braden Lindmark, one of the safeties, helps come up to make the tackle with Mary Harden-Baylor threatening for a third consecutive unanswered score. Yeah, pretty impressive start. I mean, you, you get up the opening kickoff for a touchdown, and then they've come out here and offensively have done a great job. They took advantage of, of course, a shank punt, and, and now they're looking to drive it the length of the field. Miller motions back to the slot. Wide open. He Mike. goes across the middle of the field, makes the catch for the touchdown. Earlier it was Jordan, this time it's Miller, and the hookup for the touchdown. After North Central's opening kick return for a touchdown, 15 straight from the Crusaders. Boy, I, I don't know how KJ Miller gets this wide open. Uh, I, I had to say it was wide open, but right, right off, off the line of scrimmage. My goodness. That's the second time you've let a wide receiver from the crew wide open for a house call. Brandon Cunningham's extra point is good. It's 16 to 7. Well, you illustrated it earlier with Jordan's touchdown. What happens with Miller? He's in the slot. He's going to just cut inside, and there's nobody there. No one's even covering him. It's just a bust by the Cardinals' defense. It just absolutely can't happen. And now you're in a bit of a hole here. These wide receivers for Mary Harden Baylor, very, very impressive. No, it's been Jordan, it's been Miller and Martin, who's already yeah. over 100 yards receiving. And every time they've touched the ball, they have accumulated points. Their head coach, Pete Fredenberg. Fifth title game for him. 15 straight seasons of 10 or more wins. He was a defensive assistant at Baylor from 1980 to 1993, then at LSU and Louisiana Tech. And this program, with his success, has immense support. You know, it was great chatting with him. I mean, he doesn't, he's the CEO of this program, right? He doesn't call the plays, he lets his coordinators do their thing. But what he does, Mike, is he builds the culture. And he's built this program from really nothing to what they become an absolute powerhouse here at the Division III level. Terrence Hill on the return gets out to the 20-yard line and no further as the deficit is 16-7 in favor of Mary Harden Baylor. What would you like to see improved here with North Central on offense? Well, I mean, we talked to Ethan uh, Greenberg in, in the open, and or Greenfield, I should say, excuse me, pardon me, Ethan Greenfield, he needs to get more carries. They've got to get the, the ground attack uh, going offensively to set up some of the, the uh, uh, passing game. And, and frankly, that's, that's what I'm seeing. This Mary Harden Baylor defense has been extremely stout against the run to start this ball game. Twenty three yards on the ground for North Central here in the opening quarter. On first down, they set up the screen to the edge, a modest gain of about four. And let's go to Alex. Well, Mike and Dustin, as you all just said, Mary Harden Baylor's defense has been stout against the run. Earlier this week, Micah Hackett told me we say stop the run every week, but this week it's essential when it comes to facing these North Central running backs. He pointed out how good their defensive line has been all week, and that's led by Pete Smith, or I should say all season. Well, Pete Smith was just rallying his defense. He likes how they're matching up physically right now. That certainly worked out for Smith and the rest of this group as Greenfield got out of the first wave and somehow keeps this run alive. He is just tireless in his pursuit of yards and a first down as he works his way for 15. I, I said in the open, he is an absolute workhorse for this offense. Look at him just break tackles. One, two, three, four, five tackles 
six guys it takes to bring him down nearly 13 yards down the field what a run and maybe that's the run Mike that gets this offense going and gives them some motivation here because they need something to get going offensively Landing on the roll and off balance throw and that falls incomplete Tommy Bowden the converted quarterback knocks it away I talked about you know Bowden just making his first start a week ago and you know just couldn't really crack the lineup offensively you know and, and they said well you're one of our best athletes so do you want to play some defense says give it a shot comes out here grades out extremely well against Wisconsin Whitewater and is doing a good job playing that crew position that's what they call that safety spot uh, for the crew a first timer to defense Second and ten after the incomplete pass. That's a tough one to go up and get. And Kaminsky right at the first down marker should have a first down. Yeah, that's exactly why there are NFL scouts looking at Kaminsky. You watch him here top of the screen. Just going to run a little in route right to the sticks. Goes up, catches it. First down, Cardinals. He had Micah Hackett. A linebacker who Alex mentioned just a moment ago sitting right underneath him on that route. It had to be a great throw, and it was from Layden, the second year freshman and the Division Three leader in passing efficiency this season. One of the final snaps of the first quarter. Lanin tucks it. He's got space off to the left side. His run is limited to just one yard as Akeem Jackson, the senior from Fairfield, Texas, brings him down to the turf and brings the first quarter to a close. That is the end of the first quarter of play. It started out looking like a beautiful night for North Central. A kickoff return for a touchdown, but since then, 16 straight points scored by Mary Harden Baylor. The crew making a long trip up from Texas with a trophy on their minds. To start the game, North Central wide receiver D'Angelo Hardy went 93 yards to the house for a touchdown. Since then, Mary Harden Baylor has answered with touchdown tosses to Brandon Jordan, KJ Miller, a field goal as well from Brandon Cunningham. One missed extra point keeps them from having a 10 point lead as we get ready for the start of the second quarter with North Central on offense. These two teams combined 27 and 0, the two longest winning streaks at all levels of college football. And a second and nine gets things going as they flip ends of the field. Lane in on the rollout and his dart to the sideline is pulled in by D'Angelo Hardy. But the one thing I'll tell you, Mike, that has been impressive to me in the start of this ball game is the speed, really, of the defense of Mary Harden Bay, especially up front. You know, they don't have the biggest guys in the world. You know, they, they go about 250 average uh, weight across the board, but boy, can they run, and, and they are getting after Luke Lane early in this ball game. If you look at some of even the best teams around college football, there are defensive linemen on a two deep yeah. listed as starters who don't have any sacks. That is not true on <laughs> this two deep for their defensive line. The ends, four, eight, even the tackles. Yeah, Pete tackles Smith, sacks, yeah. five and a Tristan half sacks Green. this year. They find their way into the backfield, which they'll look to do here on third down and five. Landon's got time, and the baseball player sends a frozen rope to Kaminsky for a first down. You know, Brad Spencer, the, the offensive coordinator for North Central, was telling us about his recruitment of Kaminsky. He said he saw him when he was a junior and saw him on the field. And, and you kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, too, Mike, the speed of him. I mean, he just looked like a different dude than everybody else. I mean, he is a, a really special player. Uh, of course, he... You know, out of, out of high school, got a scholarship to Winona State. Things didn't work out. I'd say they worked out here pretty well at North Central. And that's a difficult thing to walk away because you don't have scholarships Correct. at the Division Three level. Correct. With the cost of college today, and certainly the fit for him has been great, just about 50 minutes from home. 
Ball comes loose as Lehman was back in the pocket, and Mary Harden Baylor recovers as Micah Hackett got into the pocket and takes it away. Boy, Micah Hackett is shot out of a cannon. 25 is going to come into your screen here off the edge, relentless. When we chatted with the Mary Harden Baylor staff, they said he might be the most athletic backer of their group. And they've got some really good ones there between Muller, Jackson, and Frazier. Uh, Hackett's just been kind of battling a, a bit of an injury this season. Uh, was a former starter, but now kind of getting a little bit healthy. Makes a big play. Maybe his biggest play of his career in the national championship. Second straight week with a takeaway for the linebacker for Mary Harden Baylor. Back to work for the offense. They set up the trick play. It's Martin down the sideline, and he makes the catch before he's angled out of bounds. And Miller makes the throw as well, a pickup of 10. Well, again, I talk about, you know, the defense and how athletic they look. I can't say enough about this offense, too. These wide receivers, how this, Mike, you see it, the speed of these guys and their ability uh, to make plays in, in space is just, it's tremendous. A Crusaders first and 10 from the North Central 36. Martin once more, already over 100 yards in the first quarter. Was he down as that play came to a close? Because the ball came loose, the Cardinals come away with it, but the officials say the ball was down at the 15-yard line. And there's an injured offensive lineman as well, and that's Ethan Ruckman, the sophomore right tackle who's being tended to now by the athletic training staff. Hey guys, can, will you give us one here? Can you give us one here? Ruling on the field is the, is the runner was down prior to the ball coming loose. Officials time out on the field for an injured offensive player. Good explanation from our referee Stuart Hinman on what was a chaotic finish to that play. And it is going to go to the replay booth. It's close, Mike. The question is, as the football's ripped out, is the knee down and is the ball loose? Be a great look here. Oh, ball's loose, Mike. That, that to me, is a fumble. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's Cardinal ball when we come back. Now, it's a quite important decision by the replay booth and a timeout with the injury on the field. The field was that the receiver was down. It was changed by the replay booth. Our rules analyst, Matt Austin, with us tonight. Matt, why was this changed? Yeah, Mike, this was a great overturn. You can see the ball come loose just as the receiver starts going to the ground. The ball makes its way back towards his elbow. That ball's loose. The defender flipped it up in the air, uh, recovered by the defense. That's a great overturn. Matt, thank you, and a huge turn of events for North Central as well. They went up 7-0. They've allowed 16 unanswered. Dustin, they've been trying to get the ground game going with Ethan Greenfield. And their last drive, they showed some promise. And here a nice chunk on first down. They've got to get this ground game going. And, and really, the thing is, I mean, they've got to get a sustained drive. Their defense has been out there way too long. Uh, Mary Hart and Baylor, they've got so many athletes. They've been making plays. And it's been putting North Central in tough spots. They finally get the stop. Let's see if this could be the drive to turn things around for North Central. Well, it was one turnover leading to another. Their quarterback, Lanin, the second-year freshman, was stripped, fumbled, and turned it over as Micah Hackett recovered. And that's a first down for North Central, a team that last fall, or I should say this, this past spring, when some Division Three teams did elect to play, they didn't. They took 25 practices knowing that, you know what? There's not a stack bowl. There's not a trophy at stake. We have a veteran team is what Jeff Thorne said. And a quarterback who's young wanted to give him more experience. Greenfield off to the right side where he's met by Micah Hackett and Mary Harden Baylor comes off the field in celebration after that run. In the series of just a couple of snaps down at this end of the field, perhaps 
a third turnover of the quarter. Well, Hackett's got the football. Take a look here. Greenfield's going to get kind of tied up here. Oh, they're going to say four. Yeah. Wow. Forward progress was stopped. Let's go. Boy, that's that's a tough one. You know, had the Ford Progress not been stopped, I mean, that's to me a turnover. That's, that's a tough call. So after the premature celebration by Mary Harden Baylor, it's right back to work for the Cardinals on second and six. Timeout by the crew. Our rules analyst, Matt Austin, we're happy to bring you back just a couple snaps <laughs> later. It's such a nebulous area there as to when forward progress is officially stopped. How are officials instructed to make that determination? Well, it, it, it's totally subjective. Whatever the official feels that the runner is, is under control or moving backwards, they shut it down. The problem here is with the coach, it's not reviewable. So the head coach called timeout. I believe yeah. he wanted to challenge it, but it's not challengeable. Uh, forward progress is not reviewable unless it uh, affects a first down or a touchdown. Mary and so good stuff, Matt. Thank you. was ruled forward progress was stopped. That play is not reviewable. Question. And so, Matt, I imagine that conversation between referee and head coach is just you going, hey, sorry, we can't go back upstairs with that one, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> nice to have Matt on the broadcast tonight. Yes, and Stuart. We've had so many close calls this year, Mike. It's, it's good to have Matt with us. Stuart Hinman on the field as well has provided some great clarification. Lanen fires to a soaring Kaminsky. And he's forward to the 41 yard line, a pickup of 13 to his top target. And take a look at Kaminsky in the slot again. It's going to be a zone coverage and, and just like kind of a little scissor route on the outside. And as they give the cushion, he's going to go right past the sticks. And what a throw by Luke Lane on the money. The receiver was a finalist for the Gallardi Trophy, the top honor in Division Three college football this year. Here's the space they've been looking for. And that pass is incomplete. Hardy was in the area. Even Lanin can be a vital the component of their the running game. Round, the quarterback was outside the pocket, and the ball got beyond the edge. You know, Greenfield ran for almost 1,700 yards coming into this game, and Lanin was just shy of 500 yards on the ground. Yeah, 10 touchdowns on the season. You know, obviously re replacing a Gallardi winner uh, from a season ago, a three-year starter, tough shoes to fill, but he has done a terrific job. Smart kid. You know, we talked with the staff. He's, they're like, he's a 32 ACT guy, you know, 4.0 type student. Really, really smart. He surveys everything probably a couple of times before he takes a hard hit along the sideline from the cornerback, Keith Gibson. Wow, and their flag comes in here. Wondering if maybe Lanin stepped out of bounds prior to the hit. He gets up, he's okay, that's good news. Take a look at zero on the end here. I, if they're saying that's a late hit, I, I, he's in the air, Mike, prior to going out of bounds. I, I, I think that's clean. And we still wait for the official call from the field. The play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number zero. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Love to bring Matt back in here if we can. Matt, I mean, I, to me, I, I, I look at the runner as, as still a live runner. What, 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 right call, bad call here. Well, this is a case of trying to protect the quarterback. Okay. He had given himself up. He was taking a step okay. out of bounds, and it was a big hit. If yeah, it would okay. have been just a push, I think they would have let it go. Technically, he wasn't out of bounds, but he was giving himself Excellent. up. Excellent. Thank you. And another 15 yards as Greenfield is off to the right side. He runs for another first down. 
See the crew defenders trying to rip in there and take that ball away from Greenfield going for 13 yards. Yeah, and, and you know, Greenfield a little earlier in this drive, I thought was kind of carrying the football, a little sloppy, a little loose. Got to tighten that up because th this is a defense with the crew. And Mary Hart and Baylor, of course, I mean, they're, they're just, they're, they're ball searching and, and they're trying to get that thing out. Not just make the tackle, but they're trying to get turnovers. Give to Greenfield again. He's flattened by Akeem Jackson, the linebacker. Closing in on nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Here are the Stag Bowl in Canton, Ohio, the Division Three Football Championship. My cousins, Dustin Fox, Alex Chapel at field level, rules analyst Matt Austin, who has been a crucial part of this broadcast tonight. And North Central trying to slow down a Mary Harden Baylor team that has scored 16 unanswered points. Lane and zips it to the edge. Here goes Hardy. Upended at the 15 yard line on a hit by Titus Dunk. Now, as the field begins to shrink a little bit, North Central, this is where their defense has faced difficulty, allowing Jordan and Miller to slip behind them for touchdown passes. See if they can put some magic on the 10th play of the drive. Like they put Kaminsky here on the outside. Typically he's in the slot. And they're going to go to the ground again. But I'm telling you, down here in the red zone, Mike, I, I, go to your, your playmakers. Kaminsky has been dynamic all year long. I, I wouldn't be surprised here to see them take a shot to number 11 uh, towards the end zone. One of the best receivers in Division Three history, eighth most catches fourth most yards at this level and they line him up and most of the time to the top of the yeah. screen there he is again right there see if they take a shot to him Greenfield left side has space cuts back to the five and he's toppled inside the five yard line and a first and goal for North Central He's getting going now, Dustin. Yeah, well, good thing I'm not the play caller because I, I'd be taking shots to the end zone and they're just getting the crown game cooking here. Great blocking up front by this offensive line, which has been, you know, kind of mishmashed over the last couple of weeks. They've had guys in and out of the lineup. Uh, but here late on this drive, boy, Greenfield running really hard and getting some terrific blocks by his, uh, his, his guys up front. Wednesday of last week, they had to switch around the offensive line due to COVID protocols. Still changes here this week. And it's Lanin to the left side. He is stood up at the one yard line. Now they had the misdirection working there. Gibson helps make the tackle, hack it as well. We've seen those two of the hardest hitters on this defense. Yeah, but you, you saw Gibson on, on the previous hit, and then here comes Hackett at the end. He's the one that keeps him out of the end zone. Boy, I thought that was going to be a, a surefire touchdown run there for the Cardinals. Get stuffed right at the goal line. Greenfield there with Lane They hand it off to him up the middle, and he is stopped again. Third and goal upcoming. Well, at this point, I, I got to think it's four down territory. You're so close, you're on the one yard line. If you're going to throw, Third downs when you throw the football. You come back to Greenfield on fourth down, but I uh, wouldn't be surprised if, if they go to the ground game here again. But you know, after getting stuffed the previous two run plays, maybe this is the play you take that shot. They load up with two tight ends off to the left side. Give it to Greenfield behind those big bodies. He's short. He's short, Mike. Officials will peel away the layers of the goal line pile. Oh, and it's a touchdown for North Central. The My 14th bad. play of the drive yields six points for the Cardinals. My bad. Looked like he was stopped short by the crew defense. And as the official comes in off the from the sideline, says it's a touchdown. Dustin, what's the best part of a cinnamon roll? The middle. The middle. You gotta get to the middle of the pile. 
That's where they found the painter with Greenfield <laughs> taking breaking. the plane to the goal line. Got to unpile this thing to find out that he's in the end zone. I, I again, I thought he was short. And maybe they'll take a look at it. I'm not sure, but uh, as they unpile this thing, they're going to say it was a touchdown. Looks like Mary Harden Baylor's sideline. Everyone is trying to call timeout to see if this can go to replay timeout. review. Mary Harden Baylor, their first timeout of the half. The difficulty is going to be here. The call on the field favors the right. offense because they'd need indisputable video evidence to overturn that call and with that many limbs and torsos in the way I suppose good luck trying to overturn that I don't know that you can overturn this I, I thought from our vantage point here in the booth he was just a little bit short but when they unpile this thing they say it's a touchdown I, I, I love to bring Madden again make him earn, he's earned his paycheck early in this first half tonight it, how tough would this be to overturn well, it's going to be extremely difficult because, as you said, you just don't have a great view. Uh, we tried to get a view down the goal line, but the official was in the way, unfortunately. Um, the interesting thing here is when the runner's tackled, it looks like he's tackled parallel to the line of scrimmage. When the officials get in, now he's laying perpendicular to half his body's in the end zone. So uh, it's going to be a tough one. So now the wait is on North Central to reemerge from their sideline and try the point after. Not a view there. We are in Northeast Ohio. Where's the Goodyear bloom tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in Cleveland on Sunday for the Browns yeah, game. Yeah, 15 miles up the road. Akron, Ohio. Well, it's been said before and suppose worth saying again, Ethan Greenfield just lived it. Nothing's given, Dustin. Everything is earned here in Northeast Ohio, oh. including a very hard-fought six points and the extra point to make it 16-14. What a drive by North Central to get back in this ball game. Ethan Greenfield giving the Cardinals a little life right now. Canton, Ohio. Some have called it the house that my partner Dustin oh, Fox built. Some, some have said that. Not many, very few, less than a half a percent. But my cousins, Dustin Fox, Alex Chappell, and Matt Austin with you here tonight in the Stag Bowl, the Division Three Football Championship. So a huge drive there, 14 plays, touchdown for North Central. Now, five and a half minutes, can they get a stop and perhaps get the ball back before half? Well, the great thing about the last drive was it gave their defense a little bit of a rest, right? To get off to the sideline, kind of regroup, refocus. They're back in the ball game. Their offense gave them some life. And I'm telling you, Mike, as a defensive player, uh, you know, when you're on the field all day and your offense is really struggling, it, it can kind of wear on you as well. So that touchdown drive could bring some juice, some life here to the Cardinal defense. Kyle King, the senior quarterback, started all but a few games this year. Releases that with a lot of contact between wide receiver and defender. Looking for Brandon Jordan. They have not targeted him all that much today. There is no flag on the play. It looked like it was D'Angelo Robertson. Robertson in coverage, excuse me, and just kind of gets run over. Uh, Alex, you got, you got an update for us? Yeah, well, offensive lineman Ethan Ruckman still out of this one. He was helped off the field earlier by trainers. They were looking at him on the bench. They were checking out his left knee, icing his knee. He's been lightly jogging around the sideline, kind of bending it, testing it out, trying to fight through that discomfort as he looks to get back into this battle. Yeah, that'll be a, a big one to watch here as we go. Really good offensive lineman for the crew. Right now being replaced by Wyatt Crawford there at right tackle. This is some running room up the sideline for K.J. Miller. He goes for 20 yards along his own sideline. This is just a great play in space. And, and, you know, the thing that the staff said to us this week is, you know, they've got to plan touches for K.J. Miller. Because every time, and this is their words, not mine, every time he gets the ball in space, he makes something happen, makes guys miss. Really, really dynamic athlete here to go along with Brandon Jordan and Brenton Martin. From just across midfield, pressure comes, ball comes loose on the hit. 
who has and the it. bottom of that pile oh, North oh. Central has it they got the ball back a lot sooner than perhaps they thought Jake Beasley on the corner blitz takes it away and Cameron Martin the defensive tackle in celebration after help from his teammate Beasley Beasley coming in here off the backside on a corner cat blitz just blindsides Kyle King. Not sure exactly who comes up with the ball, but whoa, what a shot in the back by Jake Beasley. See, Beasley's are going to be up here, and you're going to see him just kind of come in here at the very last moment, and his block is missed in the backfield by Thomas. Greenfield on first down. Eight yards, hard fought through crew defenders, arms and limbs. Beasley on that blitz. He's his third straight year as a first team all conference player, a former wide receiver turned defender. Good player. Long. That's what they like at their corners. They want long, lanky, physical corners. And that's what they've got between Beasley and Rummel. Four-man rush. Lanin throws back foot along the sideline. And Kaminsky, oh, what athletic ability, not only to go up and get it, but to get the foot down as well. And, and the football is thrown almost a little behind. So he has to do an acrobatic move. To, oh, my goodness. How did he get that? He gets two down. That's good in the National Football League. What a catch. Goes up there, has to turn his body, contorts himself, and gets in bounds. What a catch by Kaminsky. As advertised, I think, Mike. He sets them up first and 10 at the 12. Greenfield with a couple blockers in front. Slips an ankle tackle with the pursuit from Santi Parker on the backside. This is huge here for North Central team that averages almost 55 points a game, the highest number at the Division Three level. They went up 7-0, allowed 16 straight. If they can punch it in here, oh, good, because Mary Harden Baylor is going to get the ball to start the second half. No doubt. This game has shifted big time. And it's shifted about two to three different times. You know, the game starts with the opening kickoff return for touchdown for North Central. Mary Harden goes with all the unanswered scores. And now here comes the Cardinals. Well, you can say this, if nothing else, as Tristan Green tackles Greenfield. Brad Spencer, the offensive coordinator for North Central, has been dedicated to handing the ball to number eight close to the goal line. Oh, here's what you do. I mean, when you get in tough moments, and this is the biggest game of, of these players' lives, right? You go to your playmakers. Who, who are the playmakers, right? Greenfield, Kaminsky on the outside. You got Beasley making plays on defense, D'Angelo Hart. Look, those are the dudes that make the plays, and that's where they're going here offensively, uh, especially. Timeout North Central with 2.17 to go. Calls its first timeout of the half. It'll be a full media timeout. A two-point game in the Buckeye State with a national championship on the line. The Cardinals within striking distance. Then twice as good yardage-wise as their first three and points-wise a chance to be a lot better. What has been more fruitful for this offense, Dustin? Oh, I, I, I think just the ground attack uh, sort of defining this game. I mean, they've been more physical here in the second quarter. The offensive line kind of pushing Mary Hart and Baylor around a little bit. This time the crew defense fights back. Tristan Green has been an active defender along that first line to make sure Greenfield does not have a lot of room to work with. The crew takes a timeout here to stop the clock. Decision time. What would you do? Um, I take the points. Uh, I think you're too far away, and I, it, really, it's fourth and 
two and a half ish three three yeah he's a full three yeah and, and, and in this situation you're, you're almost thinking it's almost like fourth and five because the goal line perhaps that's the discussion here between Jeff Thorne and Luke Lane and head coach and quarterback saying you know what we do want to go for this. I'm not We're Brandon, feeling good. Like, listen, Brandon Staley of the Chargers, we saw last night, two times in the first half, decides to go for it on fourth down inside the five yard line. Um, I, I'm all about going for it on fourth and one or shorter, or fourth and two even, but I think this is a long three. And with it being, because the missed PAT, a chance to take the lead and go to halftime I think that is a, it'd be a huge momentum shift here for, for North Central I would kick the field goal and that comes from somebody who is very very aggressive in terms of like my decisions what I think people should do let's see what they decide well Tanner Raines the field goal kicker has come out so they elect to take the lead if points in a national championship the field goal. matter man I'm telling you there is no next week that's right a relative chip shot from 22 yards for the freshman. His kick up and good. It's 17-16 North Central gaining the lead with 2.05 to go before the half. Well, Reigns last week in their semifinal win, two for two, including a season-long 42, keeps things going. More bowl games for you, four of them tomorrow on ESPN and the app. It starts at 11 Eastern. What a good way to get your day started. I guess you're sleeping in, but you know what? Get some coffee, <laughs> then go watch Western Kentucky App State. Utah takes on Fresno State. Eastern Michigan, one of the more impressive program turnarounds in the country, takes on Liberty. And it ends with a 23rd ranked Ragin' Cajuns and the Marshall Thundering Herd in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Malik Willis going to play in that game? Did he announced? I haven't seen. There's just no way to uh, find uh, out. There's no way to know. You'll we, have to we, watch the we game. We just got word he is playing in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so the two longest winning streaks, regardless of level here in this game, one of those streaks will end tonight. Ragin' Cajuns and Ferris State playing for the Division II National Championship, putting their winning streak on the line as well. Short kick taken at the 13-yard line. And it'll be favorable starting field position just shy of the 40-yard line here for Mary Harden Baylor. And quarterback Kyle King as they work with a minute 58 and one timeout. Plenty of time. Great field position. Great weapons on the outside. And putting Kyle King in a situation to run the two-minute offense. Be curious to see if they can get some points here before halftime. And if they look for Brandon Jordan a little bit. Their top receiver this year in terms of yards and touchdowns. Does have one score already, but not a significant number of targets. As they run and they go into North Central Territory, Kenneth Cormier rumbles for 12 yards. Good run on first down, and, and now you go a little bit hurry up here. Clock stops with the chains moving. And this is not an excellent field goal kicking team. A long rollout and a beautifully oh, wow, placed throw. throw hits Brenton Martin. What a throw on the move. And that's the reason he's starting. I mean, he's got this touch. Beautiful concentration by Brenton Martin on the outside. These guys know what, what it's like to play in the NFL. They get two feet down, Mike. <laughs> uh, Martin, perhaps, yeah. for either side thus far, has been the offensive MVP, despite his team trailing by one, closing in on halftime. King fighting off a sack attempt rolls down the sideline and just threads that ball to KJ Miller. How does he thread this football, Mike? Well, perhaps with a little bit of a legal help in the backfield. Okay. <laughs> Probably going to get a hold here, but like I, amazing athletic ability by Kyle King rolling out on the move, and you see the arm strength. Holding off 
defense. Number 76. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. The foul is on the left tackle, Ruel Tando, that takes away a pretty sharp throw from King to Miller. Yeah, there was pressure coming by the Cardinals defense. And as King's flushed outside the pocket, that's when the call's going to come. There's 76 right there. I'm going to watch him just kind of. Yeah, it's going to be a hold taken down Dan Gilroy, number nine. And but still, the end of this play is impressive by Kyle King. Take nothing away from the accuracy of that throw. Obviously, it's going to put him back to first and 20. But what a what a very athletic play. From the 46. Wide open. Time in the pocket. He floats it. Oh, Jordan tucks it right into his shoulder pads to make the catch. How does he get so wide open? That's the second time tonight. I mean, that's the top target for this crew offense. Brandon Jordan, six foot six. How do you lose him? 21 yards for number 21, who last week had 11 catches for a buck 64 and two scores. Mary Harden Baylor trying to retake the, the lead. King's on the move again. He just flips it forward for Jordan, who is escorted out of bounds by Dakota Cremines, the safety. 14 more yards for Jordan. He's going to run Jordan on a little crossing route, and he kind of becomes just the, the dump down here. Wasn't he really going to throw? It's almost like a. It's like tossing a coin yeah. into a wishing well. <laughs> that's a good way to put it, Mike. And with a very good return. Better than the average wisher, that's for sure. He got his wish. <laughs> with a three receiver set off to his left side, they try and run to the right side. And North Central sniffs that out. Cameron Martin, the defensive tackle, sends King Turford. Now inside a minute to go. Mary Harden Baylor still has a timeout. I, I honestly, if I'm Mary Harden Baylor, I, I take my time at this point. I mean, you, you're in great position here to get points, and I, I would want to leave no time uh, for North Central here at the end of the first half. You've got Jordan, Miller, and Martin all together. They set things up and send it to Miller. That pass was nearly taken away as they whipped it to the outside. Jake Beasley, if he grabs that, would have everybody in the rear view mirror. Oh, my goodness. I nearly jumped out of my chair here in the booth. Watch 21 at the top of the screen. Oh, excuse me, 14, Sam Taviani. My, my, my bad, Tavi yeah, Taviani does a great job, the, the outside backer, excuse me. You I nearly expected that speed more from a corner. I, huh? didn't, I didn't expect that speed from a linebacker, my goodness. He just jumped off the screen. King through the middle of the defense. Now they're down to 30 seconds. And they face a fourth down. Decision time. I'd call a timeout. And think it over. That's what I would do. The sideline doesn't appear to be particularly Inclined to make that choice unless coach Fredenberg is just going to take it down call the timeout yeah, kick the field goal. Call timeout about three seconds or five seconds <laughs> Or four seconds you get a generous clock operator that can wind down to zero at the half anyway Absolutely. Uh, boy, this is a It'll tough a call um, I, I would I, Because it's the end of the half situation a lot of the, they again, are getting the ball back right. remember that but remember the reason these folks in analytics think this is a good decision down here to go for these opportunities is because if you don't get it you give the team you know 95 yards to go the other direction being in an end of half situation I think that changes you throw that out the window I would kick the field goal here because it's end of half end of half situation makes sense it does certainly it's a good explanation and Dustin after the first quarter, early into the second quarter, this game had a distinctly different feel, as if it could have been a runaway night for the Felt crew. like it, yeah. And, and then, you know, NC comes right back. They take the lead, and, and we'll see what happens here on, on this decision to, to 
take the points, see if they can make the, the kick and take the lead back. But I think this, again, I, I think it's going to be a four-quarter game. And it's going to come down to the last possession. That's what it feels like now. North Central takes timeout. Prior to the snap, North Central calls its second timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So North Central still has one more timeout to use, depending on just how tricky they want to be yeah. going against the crew here at the end of the half. My cousins Dustin Fox, Alex Chapel down on the field tonight here in Canton. What do you think has been the most surprising part of the first half so far? I, I think the fact that I, I thought NC would come out and dominate the ground attack. That's what they did in the second quarter. This game's back and forth. I, I think it's going to be a fun finish. I really do. Ethan Greenfield came into this game second most rushing yards mm -hmm. in Division Three, just yeah. 40 off the lead. He was really bottled up in the first half. On the second quarter. Yeah. They got it going. <laughs> or rather, I should say, in the first quarter. Yeah. And a couple of turnovers as well with fumbles both ways as the Cardinals were able to somewhat regain control of this and take their destiny into their own hands. Yeah. So it's Brandon Cunningham for a very short field goal from 22 yards to end the first half and give the crew the lead. His try is good. And it's 19-17. There was no Stag Bowl last year, canceled by COVID-19. 2019 and 2018, the championships in Division Three football belonged to one of these two teams. They have the nation's two longest winning streaks at 24 and 19 games, respectively. Somebody's is going to come to a close tonight, and you can't ask for a lot more out of a game than a two-point contest going into the locker room. I'll tell you, I, I thought this thing in the first quarter was going to get away from uh, North Central. They have come back. They took the lead, and the lead changes again. And this is going to be a great, great second half, Mike. A national championship, two-point game at halftime. Can you ask for more, Mike? You can. You're in the best location in the nation, Canton, Ohio. And because, as I just kind of mentioned, the 100-yard difference is the kickoff return. 285, 172, right? And you're thinking, well, how's this a two-point game? It's a 93-yard well, kickoff return. So add another 93 to... To, to that number right there, right? And, and we're about even. So it's, a, it's been a tight ball game. You look from a big picture perspective at these teams too, the points they score on the other side, how few points they allow, 11 and eight points respectively on defense. But the level of competition takes a step up here in the national championship game as well. So those averages, while not meaningless, don't carry the same meaning, perhaps, that they do during the course of the regular season. Mike, what's better than this? The birthplace of football. We've got a national championship on the line, a two-point game in halftime, two of the best teams in the country, the two longest winning streaks on the line. It's going to be a great second half. In the stadium where you not only played your high school football, but also the final game of your NFL yeah. career. The Pro Football Hall of Fame game, 2009. You're the pride of Glen Oak High School, right? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Golden Eagles. Hey, let's go to Alex. What's up, Alex? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Well, I had a chance to catch up with Coach Thorne and Coach Fredenberg, and when talking with Coach Thorne, he said he really liked the way his offense was able to catch win there in the second quarter. He credits the adjustments that they made, and he likes what they're doing. He says they'll continue that here in the second half. As for Coach Fredenberg, he said when it comes to some of the self-inflicted mistakes, they've got to change that. And he says the refs are getting too much in their heads. They can't do that. It's on to the next play, and it'll make a difference here in the next in this half. Wow. It's a mental game, Mike, at times. I'll tell you what. Got to play the game. What do you think he meant by that with the refs getting in their heads? I think they're maybe not getting the calls they would like. To put it bluntly, and, and uh, you know, hey, listen, this is a national championship. You don't get another opportunity. You can't worry about whether you think this crew likes you or you're getting the calls or you're not getting the calls. Like, you just got to line up and play the next snap. And, and, and if you are North Central or, or Mary Hardin Baylor, you just go. And you've got 30 minutes for, for the rest of your life, right, to remember this night. 
The blitz is on. The throw gets off in advance of that. Jordan up the sideline, clamoring for a flag with blanket coverage there from Jake Beasley, who's had that assignment all night. What a great matchup on the outside. Nearly a, t a terrific catch, but give Beasley credit. You talk about size, 6'6", 240, Brandon Jordan, but Jake Beasley, both, by the way, wearing number 21, goes 6'3", 195. He is tonight typically playing the, the, the boundary corner, but he's going to be matched up with number 21, Brandy Jordan, all night long. Another matchup to watch here in the second half. And on their first drive of the second half, they face a third down and eight. King was backpedaling. He floats that toward the sticks. North Central wants it to be a fourth down. Mary Harden Baylor looking for a first on the catch by KJ Miller, and they do get what they asked for. This is a great job by Miller in the scramble mode, right? I mean, he's running a route down the field, but when your quarterback starts to get pressure, he comes back towards the line of scrimmage. Great job by Kyle King and, and terrific, uh, you know, execution there by Miller. That's a hard fought first down run of 12 yards for Afonso Thomas. They gave it to him last week, 26 carries, 79 yards in their 24-7 victory over Wisconsin. Whitewater wasn't easy, Dustin, for both of these teams to advance through the semifinals. Both of no. them had to win on the road. Yeah, and, and that was an interesting conversation, too, with the coaches as, as to, you know, why they had to go on the road and all that good stuff. But uh, very impressive. Both these these teams, with their winning streaks on the line, Mayor Harden Baylor goes to Wisconsin Whitewater, takes care of business, right? North Central goes to Alliance Ohio, Purple Raiders, all the, the, the lore of, of what they have done, the mystique, the, the legend of Larry Karras, right? They get the job done, and here they are. Coach Fredenberg, as we talked about, trying to build their own dynasty, and certainly that doesn't take away from what they've done, but Mount Union is one of the best at any level. Coach Fredenberg said, Larry Karras, Vince Karras, what those guys have done and then gone on and continue to do, at, you know, Vince at Toledo, at, to the yep. Division One level, just carrying on their success. Yeah, I mean, and Jason Candle, of course, who, who was there as well. I mean, there's been so many coach Matt Campbell at Iowa State, a, a, a Mount Union alum. Right, if we finished the list, uh, we, we'd be going into Saturday morning. Yeah, that's a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of great coaches, but uh, it, was, it, it was nice to hear him give credit to, to Coach Karras and says they, they're really trying to emulate what they built in uh, Alliance. And frankly, they, they have. <laughs> They've done a great job. They, they are now at the top of the mountain with North Central. Alliance just 30 minutes from here in this battle between the last two national champions at the Division Three level. Another first down. It's K.J. Miller once more. And how about the facilities they've oh got goodness. as well for Mary Harden Baylor. They're in Belton, Texas, between Austin and Waco. That is a gorgeous football shrine. I, I was so impressed with that facility. You know, we'll, we'll give you a look here in a moment. I, again, for a Division III program to have these type of facilities, their stadium is off the charts. First and 10 for the crew after they kicked a field goal to bring the first half to a close. It's to take the lead where they stand right now at 19-17. King slides, and he's three yards short of the first down. Look at this place. It's a shrine. My goodness, imagine playing football there. And the thing is, you know, in Division Three, like, you don't have scholarships. But you look at a place, an opportunity to play at a place like this, look at these facilities. It's like an NFL locker room. <laughs> Nicer than some of the NFL teams I played for back in the day. <laughs> I'd what's, go for, what's Cornella? I'd go for either one. It doesn't matter. It just looked good it enough. Look, <laughs> you don't question food that looks that there good. Go. There we go. King rolling. He flings it to the corner. Jump ball at 6-6. Six, oh, six. This all over. receiver doesn't come away with it. And it's Beasley who knocks it down. Most of the time with a guy at 6-6, six, six, 240, you figure, I'm good. Right. I'm telling you, Mike, I watched the whole play. I, my eyes were locked on Beasley. They were locked up. There we go. Great look at this. The whole play, eyes back, looking towards the ball. Ball comes. What do you do? Go up, high point, knock that thing down. Great job by Beasley on the outside. That's a tough matchup. I'll tell you what, I, 
I play cornerback. You know, and, and I wouldn't want to cover that dude. He must have been watching what's been going on in Columbus the last couple of nights. Big Ten volleyball teams going for the championship. That's a high level spike. <laughs> no doubt. Third and four. They swing it to the flat, and they've got the first down with Miller, who's gotten them a couple of first downs on this drive, simply utilizing his speed to the outside. And I think, Dustin, that there, if there has been an edge for Mary Hart and Baylor in a two point game, their speed has certainly been part of it. Take a look at this block on the outside. Right there, excuse me, the circle, you see Ruckman. Great block that allows Miller to spring that for the first down. Started out his career on the JV squad back in 2016, bumped up to the varsity in 2019. And a crucial part, we saw his brother earlier, Ethan, their starting right tackle who is injured. Pressure coming, and there's another seam in the defense. Jamal Hamilton gets in on the action. His first catch of the day, and only his fifth of the season. It's good for 15 yards. They, they just, they just got, got dudes, man. They just, I mean, you look at their depth chart. They've got seven guys who, who've made eight guys, nine guys made receptions this year, but they all look the same. And the roster they, has they're all like freakish athletes. The roster has more options than the Cheesecake Factory. Got more than 100 guys I, on the that's roster. That's why I hate going there. It's too many options. <laughs> Run to the outside. Wow. And it's all the way to the goal line for Alfonso Thomas. A 15 yard perseverant run for the red shirt junior running back. And it's 25 17. Mary Harden Baylor. This is just a grown man run by Alfonso Thomas on the outside. Beasley comes up. And he's a great tackler from the cornerback spot. You've got four guys trying to bring him down, and he just doesn't allow them to do it. Will not be denied, Mike. Goes into the end zone. What a run. What a great drive. 12 plays, 81 yards. And the journey for Alfonso Thomas takes him here to the championship game. He started out his career at SMU in 2016 as a redshirt. Went to Trinity Valley Community College in 2017. Recovered from a torn Achilles and now plunges into the end zone to give his team a nine point lead in the third quarter. Looking to finish off a 15 and 0 season and hoping to make it a 20th straight win to finish 2021 through their postseason run. The final scores have not been particularly close 13 to 3 42 to 7. 49-24, and last week 24-7 in the win over Wisconsin Whitewater as they average almost 50 points a game. What Coach Friedenberg said to us this week, he said early in the season, September 25th, they played Harden-Simmons, and that was a, a, a six-point ball game they win. He said that's when this group really started to come together. The culture, the love for one another, he, he pinpointed that game as a moment that really turned their season around. Kickoffs have tended on the shorter side tonight, and a wave of yellow rages through to bring Terrence Hill to the ground. What a hit on special teams coming down. The big fella, Kenneth Cormier, a running back also playing special teams. <laughs> he levels the hit on yeah. a fellow running back, Terrence Hill. Well, for the second time tonight, North Central finds itself down a couple of scores. And they go back to the division three leader in passing efficiency, Luke Lanin. He's thrown for just 97 yards here. Almost to the midway point of the third quarter, but this is a run heavy team. That is their strength. This offense this year shattered program records for rushing yards, almost 600 more than their prior mark from their 2019 championship team. And set a new program record for rushing touchdowns with 65 coming into this game. They're the highest scoring team in the country. They're rushing total over 300 yards a game. Just arcade game numbers. That's solid tackling on the outside. 
Omari oh, Frazier, the linebacker. Thought it was a corner coming up there. Oh, with the, the speed. With the way he moved. You know what? That's That's been on both sides yeah. tonight where we've seen Sam Taviani on the other side showing off some speed, the linebacker for North Central. It's third down and six. Yeah, that, that was some serious speed off the edge from the linebacker, the Sam linebacker there. Kaminsky, the top receiver, in motion to the bottom of your screen. Lanin looks that way. He's got Kaminsky. Open running room as his run commences right near midfield. Keith Gibson makes the tackle, a gain of 27. That when he got separation, looked like it may have been a touchdown. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not good news as he gets up slow, Mike. Uh, that would be a huge, devastating loss here for this North Central offense. Clearly their best player uh, does, does a great job. He gets off the press from Gibson. Ends up being wide open, but again, they're like, look at that shoulder here. You hope he's going to be okay. Wow. The Jeff Thornton's team has to get right back to it. Their top target on the sidelines being looked at by the athletic training staff. Their response is a good one, a first down run. Gain of 10 is Kaminsky. Let's Take see a look, what yeah. happened with that with that shoulder. Comes off that press and cover two, and then as he goes down to the ground, oh. He's in a lot of pain as he gets up. Well, you hope he's okay. Oh, well, he's back in. <laughs> That's good news. Bouncing off the first pile of tacklers, Ethan Greenfield, the program's all-time leading rusher, who led the nation a couple of years ago. The last full championship division three season. Kaminsky looked like he was going to be out for at least a few plays and he's right back to it. They pop it back in or something. I mean, I'm, I'm joking, obviously, I, but he's a tough kid and uh, just came out for one play, comes right back in the ball game. Blue collar. Mike Cousins, the definition of it. He's open. Lane in. Fires to the goal line, and it's intercepted. Jefferson Fritz with the interception. Ball pops loose as he emerges from the goal line and takes it just short of the 10-yard line. Well, Dunstan, you said it. Kaminsky was a look underneath, and Lanin wanted more. And covered by the defense. First down, Mary Hartman Baylor. Yeah, he had Williams, Blake Williams, 18 open for a, a moment, a huge separation, but the pass was late. The pass was late by Lanin, and if he just, I mean, again, he doesn't make very many freshman mistakes, but that is a big one here because he had the underneath throw open, tries to go deep to Blake Williams, and it's a turnover, devastating turnover in the red zone here for Mary Harden Baylor. Great play by the defense. Mary, Mary Harden Baylor football up 26 17 when we come back. Jefferson Fritz, our rules analyst, Matt Austin, help us go through this as to why this wouldn't be a touchback if he were to go down in the end zone. Well, it's an interesting play because the there's a momentum exception. Anytime the defense takes the ball in their own end zone and takes a knee, it'd be a safety. But in this case, he intercepted the ball between the goal line and the five. His original momentum took him into the end zone. Had he been down there or taken a knee, he would have got the ball at the spot of the interception. And so it ends so, up with the ball on the nine-yard line. Great stuff Matt, here for you. Mary Harden Baylor. They lead by nine. And their last drive, which opened the third quarter, went 12 plays, 81 yards, almost five and a half minutes. North Central will look to limit the damage and the time of possession here as Luke Lanin inches to get back onto the field. It's the Stag Bowl here in Canton, Ohio, Hall of Fame Stadium, the Division III Football Championship. Harry Harden Baylor in the yellow has won 19 straight, North Central in the red and white. Winners of 24 straight, the longest streak in the country. There has been some beautiful receiving tonight from K.J. Miller. Add that one, the latest to the reel.
That's Dakota Kermines on the outside. It's an out and up. And Kermines just kind of gets his head turned back the wrong direction. And the football is thrown in a perfect spot. Really, the only spot that K.J. Miller can go get it. Look at those numbers tonight. Those really aligned with what King did throughout the course of the regular season as well, completing 64% of his passes and a mark of 32 touchdowns to two interceptions. Two picks. It's amazing. Talk about efficiency. Andy missed two games, Mike. He is uh, he's a good one now. I'll tell you what. Very impressed with his decisiveness tonight. Now he's got weapons to, to throw to on the outside. Big kid. He was 6'3", 220. Out of Texas. We can do this too. Now third and short. Well, uh, again, Mike, it, early in this ball game, it felt like Mary Hart and Baylor had all the momentum. They, you know, they, they three unanswered scores, and you're thinking this thing could get away from North Central. They come back, they, 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 they get the turnover, get the ground game going a little bit. Kind of feel like this game's teetering a little bit here, Mike, where the defense of North Central, they've got to get a stop. This is a huge third down coming up here. King hands it off, and it is a first down. A little bit more action for Kenneth Cormier. Kyle King, the senior, Alex, who did not start his career in purple and yellow. This week, you wouldn't really even believe it, but he started his career as a punter at Howard Payne. And then there was something in him that he had a strong desire to want to make the switch, play quarterback, and he's, he said it's just meant the world to him to see all the work that he's put in and these types of results. But he says it's been a long journey to become the starting quarterback here at Mary Harden Baylor. Yeah, Alex, especially coming up from the JV to the varsity, getting ready for that 2020 season, which just didn't come. Thrown into a tight window between two defenders, and King continues his great night with K.J. Miller on the receiving end once again. I said this early in the ball game. When Miller is able to get his hands on the football, something special happens. And King, when he sees that man coverage on the outside, and right there working against Braden Lindmark, that's a safety. Working against a wide receiver, that's a matchup you'll take. Look at those numbers 15 and a half yards per catch, eight catches on the night for Miller. He is having himself a natty. We talk about a window that wasn't exactly like a bay window. No. That was more of a porthole to put that into because well, Lindmark was right on top of it. You him. have to trust your wide receivers in those situations, and, and that's what, what Kyle King does. I mean, he, he understands that K.J. Miller is such a terrific athlete that if he puts that in a, a good spot, or at least somewhere close to catch radius, his receiver's going to go make that catch. And, and boy, he these three receivers, Martin, Jordan, and Miller, have been so, so good tonight. Pressure comes on King. He whips it to the goal line. Ball is tipped and out of bounds. Second time in this half, we've seen Beasley and Jordan battling for a jump ball. That, that is the matchup that I've been watching all night between Jake Beasley. Look at this. He's trying to box him out, Jordan is. And Beasley says, uh uh. He, he is a really tough, tough corner. And that's one of the, one of the toughest matchups you're going to have in the entire country. Going up against a guy who's six foot six, 240 pounds. This has been, this has been a, a, a 12 round match between Beasley and Jordan on the outside. They've been perfect on third down here in the second half. And a blown coverage blown leads coverage. to a wide open throw to set up first down. How do you lose Jordan? Well, Beasley takes the inside route, Mike, and, and somehow, I'm not sure if they were playing cover three, but you'll watch. Well, let's make sure this is a catch. Don't look at that again, I think. Your initial thoughts, Mike Cousins. Rolling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. Well, I think it's a catch, but who cares? How about Matt Austin? Matt Austin, <laughs> is that a catch? <laughs> 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 
will build the suspense. Our rules analyst, Matt Austin, weighs in on the other side. The lead, they've also got a first and goal here after a catch by Brandon Jordan inside the five that went to replay review. Matt Austin, our rules analyst, why is this a catch? Well, they came back and they confirmed it. I'm a little shocked that they did confirm it because I do think he had the, the, his hands underneath the ball, hands and arm, but that ball, you know, I don't think it's indisputable that the ball did not hit the ground. So I would have gone with stands, but either way, it's a catch. I agree. I, I, I was surprised that they came back and said confirm because it did look, I mean, it, yeah, I, I think it is a catch. I agree with Matt, but I, I, I don't know that you can see indisputable video evidence in that replay that says for sure he got his hands under the ball but uh, nonetheless first and goal the crew goes big couple of running backs couple of tight ends Jordan out wide left and that big package opened up a hole for Alfonso Thomas who had a much easier touchdown run than his last one as he's into the end zone and the lead balloons 32 17 crew now North Central they, they guess wrong they bring a blitz off the right side and the run goes the opposite direction. So they had the right call on, just just guessed a little bit wrong. Like we playing Tech Mobile. <laughs> you only have like three options, right? Up A, half B, <laughs> left A. I think you have four options. Yeah, take a look. They're gonna bring a blitz off of the left side. And again, if that, if that run goes to the left, that's stop for a, a loss in the backfield. Technical roll, Mike. And you've aged yourself out of part of the I constituency know. that has only ever played Madden. By the way, the Gallardi Trophy finalist, Jefferson Fritz, who had that interception that started things somewhere between the two-yard line and the goal line at the opposite end of the field. Yeah, Fritz, I I'm telling you, is and has been the heart and soul of this football team. Uh, I have you ever heard a coach rave as much as he did about Fritz over, the, over our conference call? Talking about defensive coordinator Larry Harmon of Mary Harden Baylor. Not from a coaching staff that has just about seen it all. <laughs> He says it's a once-in-a-lifetime kid to, to have a player like him for three years on, on this defense. Just an amazing player. We had two of the five Gallardi Trophy finalists tonight here in this game with the award going to the quarterback, Blaine Hawkins, out of Central College. The college football playoff semifinals, Friday, December 31st on ESPN and the ESPN app. Bryce Young and number one Alabama take on number four Cincinnati in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic at 3.30 Eastern. And then number two Michigan and number three Georgia in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Bearcats in their first group of five team and Michigan in the playoff for the first time. The winners play for the national championship Monday, January 10th on ESPN. You are so happy the Bearcats got in because we argued all year about would they get in? Would they have an opportunity? It took a lot. They're about a yard. They're a yard. They're a yard away from not making it. It took in. a <laughs> lot of things to go right. Well, nonetheless, they got. I think they got it right. Well, I think Dustin, that part of the beauty of this level of football is to show you that if you're going to revamp it at the highest level of FBS, it can be done. Here you have game number 15 of the season, North Central in their 14th game because they lost their first round playoff game due to COVID-19 with Carnegie Mellon. I shouldn't say they lost it, it was not played. But you shorten, if you could shorten the regular season, of course this is, if money's not a factor, which <laughs> is clearly not the case. Right, but right, right, right. it's not that these players don't play just as hard or the no game's doubt. not just as physical, it can be done. Looking oh. for Kaminsky across the middle. That pass is tipped and intercepted. Micah Hackett on the return with teammates up the sideline. It's going to be first and goal. Mary Harden Baylor. Hackett with his second week in a row with an interception forced to fumble earlier today. Has been the defensive MVP for the crew. He returns that 43 yards. This is uncharacteristic of Kaminsky. Kaminsky's right here. Like it's in his hands. He doesn't never he never drops those those easy receptions. And in Hackett's just right there behind says, I'll take this. It 
put us at first and goal. And Mike, if they get a touchdown here, it's gonna gonna be uh, could be quite yeah. deflating yeah. heading into the final 15 be minutes. A, a tough fourth quarter here for the North Central Cardinals. Ball is spotted at the four yard line for King with Thomas in the backfield. Prior to the snap, North Central calls its first timeout of the half. Well, they're running this a player on late. Timeout. And I mean, these timeouts are crucial. A necessary component of uh, what could be a comeback for North Central. And Dustin, you, you'll remember if you joined us late, we saw Andrew Kaminsky come off the field for simply a play earlier in this half where his left shoulder appeared to be quite an issue for him. And I can't say for sure, but you wonder if that impacted was his he, ability he able to extend to right? go and get that ball. Yeah, that's a good, good, uh, good point, Mike. I, I don't know. Um, I, I know this much. If you go back and look, here's the play. I mean, the football hits Kaminsky's hands, right? That's a catch 99% of the time. That's got to be a catch. It's got to be a catch. And he knows it. There, there's no one that's going to be harder on himself for, for not pulling that one in than, than Andrew Kaminsky. He, he knows that that has to be caught, and he put his defense in a tough spot now. It was a North Central timeout. Still King with Thomas. They fake the give to the running back. Here it goes Martin throwing to the back corner of the end zone, trying Adam. to find Brandon Jordan. He had him. And they were just a few inches away from yet another <laughs> touchdown. Well, luckily for North Central, Braden Lindmark was running down. Martin and enforced the Aaron throw because Jordan was running across the, the back line in the end zone and that would have been another touchdown. Martin comes off the field in favor of some bigger bodies on this play. The defense smushes down on top of Thomas. Someone say quarter. I think they're going to take it to quarter. Happy up 16 points with a chance for more on the other side. And there's only one thing to do. Put your fours up. Put your fours up. Put them up. One last time for 2021. Listen, it's a national championship. North Central's got to get a stop. The most crucial third down of their season coming up to start the fourth quarter. They started their seasons months ago after uncertainty reigned in 2020. Now here in Northeast Ohio, 15 minutes left to determine a champion in the Stag Bowl. Free Harden Baylor has taken advantage of three turnovers by North Central. Kyle King has been nothing short of fantastic. And Mary Harden Baylor looking to make it seven for seven in the red zone here as they line up Afonso Thomas at running back. Yeah, number five there to the top of the screen. Already two scores in the second half. I was going to say, give the football to five. He, he's been dominant here in the second half. Plenty of pre snap motion. King keeps it to the back of the end zone. A contested grab. And it's incomplete. Oh, that's close. Well, Boy. that's the guy to go for. Brandon Jordan, six foot six, 240, has not been the winner of the jump balls today, and that continues in the back of the end zone. This is what he does down here. It's, it's a great. Oh! Really good job by Dakota Cremines as he drags down Jordan. Watch where his backside comes down here. It's going to be on the end line, and the official's right there. Well, the entire Mary Harden Baylor sideline was just yeah. watching the video board. <laughs> they, they think they've got a touchdown. They're all extending their hands the to the heavens. The incomplete pass is under further review. 
And what a night to have our rules analyst, Matt Austin, <laughs> with us as we call on him for the 97th time tonight. Matt, what do you see on this play? Well, originally I thought it was a great call of an incomplete pass by the back judge. Looking at the review, his knee might have hit down first. His feet did not touch the ground. Oh, that, that his left knee, knee may yeah. have just touched in inbounds, but the elbow's hitting close. If the elbow hit first, he's out of bounds. If the knee hit first, it's a touchdown. So Do you, it's extremely close. You see anything here, Matt, that, that makes you say this could get overturned? I mean, anything indisputable? It's tough, right? It, it, it's very tough. It almost looks like the knee and the elbow hit at the same time, I agree. which would put it out of bounds. I agree. Well, a, a very big call. Exceedingly consequential for North Central. If they can hold Mary Harden Baylor to three here, that keeps hopes much greater than were they to give up a touchdown. Referee tonight, Stuart Hinman, leading this crew out of the Centennial Conference. And one of the things that we enjoy from a referee is a clear explanation, which we have gotten on play after been, play. Excellent. That, that makes life a lot easier. Memo to baseball, perhaps, as they work through a lockout. You can give umpires microphones so that the 60,000 people in the stadium yeah. know what's going on. I, I, there's nothing <laughs> better. That's what I love about the NBA now. They got that new mic. Now the official will get on the mic. Here we go. We'll get our explanation. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Okay. Incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down from the three-yard line. So glad we have Matt Austin with us. Well, to circle back to what he said as well, where you're looking for indisputable video evidence, and if it looks like knee and elbow are down at the same time, then there is dispute, and so the call on the field has to hold. It's a big stop. I'll tell you what, give, give, give the North Central defense a lot of credit here for bowing up. That interception had them inside the, the six-yard line. Cunningham's field goal try is successful, 36-17. North Central got the first score, and now 14-49 in the fourth. They need a lot more. Tried doing sports talk in Cleveland this week. Uh, the fans were, uh, needless to say, a little bit uh, fired up as uh, the NFL's got some protocol issues they've got to fix, and uh, they'll have that covered for you. Sunday NFL countdown. And Nick Mullins has never been more popular. <laughs> and Kyle Laletta. <laughs> Mary Harden Baylor getting three more on a Brandon Cunningham field goal just a quarter away from locking up a national championship. First kickoff of the game was returned for a touchdown by North Central by D'Angelo Hardy and Terrence Hill with a response of his own. Here we are, the birthplace of football, Canton, the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, where from all divisions of college football, you'll find them here in the Hall of Fame. Now, I'll tell you the great thing about Division Three football, and, and, and this is across the board, the, the love and passion that the players have for the game, but it's not like the competition can't get to I mean these guys have got to the National Football League and there are players in this game tonight Mike I'm telling you at least two or three that will play on Sundays defense was sitting back deep and so a short throw turns favorable there for Greenfield he gets 11 well the kickoff return was huge here to give them good field position and again I mean the game's not over 19 point game if they can get a score here quickly uh, put a little pressure on Mary Harden Baylor to finish this thing out. And you wonder how much confidence they have in, in Luke Lanin right now. He's throwing two picks here in the second half. A little conservative here with these play calls, trying to get the ground game going a little bit. Maybe want to build his confidence back up because, and, and again, the one pick I think was his fault. The other one was was a, was a tipped pass. Um, but he's a, he's a freshman, so national championship, big biggest game of his life. Here we go. Oh, and he gets wrapped up around the ankles. Micah Hackett does it again. 
He's taken away a pass. He's forced a fumble by Lanin, and this time gets him almost near where the kickoff was returned to, back near midfield. Now take a look at this pressure. Hackett gets in there. He gets knocked down. And what, uh, what effort, Mike, to, to not give up on the play. A lot of guys would stay on the ground or be slow to get up. Uh, that, that was an up down. <laughs> I mean, he goes down, he gets up, and bam, he was right there to make the sack. Third and 17 for the son of educators, Luke Lanin. It's Greenfield, his running back. Stopped at the 40-yard line, shy of their original line of scrimmage. They'll have fourth and 11. Well, obviously, four down territory here for the Cardinals. And who are you looking to? You're looking to number 11, right? I mean, I, I know that he's probably battling a little bit of that shoulder injury. Maybe that was part of the reason he couldn't fully extend. But in these situations, Andrew Kaminsky right there, number 11, that's, that's who you trust. That's who you go to in moments like this. Four receivers set as the crew drop eight in defense. And that pass was thrown directly to Hackett. Well off the mark from Lanin. And he takes it into North Central Territory. Mary Harden Baylor has never been more jubilant tonight than they are right now. And you want to give credit to the offense of Mary Harden Baylor, but the MVP of this game tonight, uh, I'm telling you, it's 25. It's Micah Hackett. This guy has made multiple turnovers, two picks, forced a fumble, just made a sack. I mean, this dude, when we talked to the coaching staff of Mary Harden Baylor, they said he is the most athletic player at the linebacker position, battling that, it, that injury that he's had all season long. But I'll tell you what, Mike, tonight, he looks pretty healthy to me. And that was a, a very poor throw, just trying to force the football in into Kaminsky. And a, a, a freshman mistake, no doubt. Rain has been falling now for about the last 10, 15 minutes here at Hall of Fame Stadium on a chilly night. And with a little bit of wind, that rain turns diagonal, as you imagine. It'll be a heavy dose of the run, but instead it's King back to throw on first down and overthrows K.J. Miller. Well, that's a little surprising. You're up 19. It's the natty, right? I mean, 12 minutes away from winning a national championship. Rain now starting to fall here in Canton, and you throw in first down. I, to me, I mean, the, a steady dose of, of Afonso Thomas here and, and Kenneth uh, Cormier, the big fella. You got a lot of good options in the crew backfield. There he is. Now they hand it off. Like Jerome Bettis, didn't he? Big dude. That's a great comparison, especially here. The Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. <laughs> See, I love Canton, Ohio. Born and raised here. This, this, this town has really uh, embraced football. The, the renovations they've done to the stadium and, and everything has just been phenomenal. Cardinals send the blitz. The throw on the run. Are you kidding? How does he make that? K.J. Miller continues to shine as he falls to the ground of the 15-yard line and still makes the completion for 26 yards. What's so great about this catch, it's not just the great catch, it's the throw. Because we're talking about Kyle King, who puts it on the outside shoulder. I know he has to kind of do a little Willie Mays turnaround contortion to make the catch, but again, Beautiful touch by by King, and he's just having himself a monster. Now, I still can't believe they're throwing, by the way. But again, uh, it's one of those things where you say, uh, no, 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 attaboy. Hard to argue with the results. Yes, right, exactly. Now you're running. Cormier takes it through the middle. A little action late. Nothing doing. And you said it, Dustin, about Rodman. the... What a block by Rodman down the field there. The, the love of football here at this stadium, the home of Kent McKinley High School, right yep. next door, Walsh University. And you played your home games here as well. We did. When I was... I went to Canton Glen Oak, and when we were in high school, we actually didn't have a stadium. So we, we played our home games here. So I, I probably played... Uh, between that and my last NFL game, I, 20 games in this building? 
you know? So it's uh, it's like home to me. And it sure feels home like Mary, to Mary Harden Baylor right now as well. The Lone Star State has never felt so close. It's going to take more than that to bring down the big man. Cormier through broken tackles. He only had eight carries over the last two weeks. He says, I'm making the most of them tonight. Five ten, two hundred twenty five pounds of muscle rumbling through a red and white defense that has faced an uphill battle on several possessions tonight on a multitude of turnovers by the offense and it's now 43 17. Mike, let's give the offensive line some credit they talked about them this week they work incredible as a unit and then when they've got running backs that run like that that inspires you very hard baylor big they're gonna miss him uh, at, at UMHB because he has been uh, the really the bell cow of, of their defense. You know, we, again, you talk to the coaching staff. You know, they recruit his cousin. Their moms are twin sisters, and, and Fritz has been uh, really the heart and soul of this defense. Does have some NFL scouts looking at him. Been a starter, Mike, since 2017. And he plays special teams, by the way. He's running down a kickoff. He gets out there to punt as well, which putting up 43 points. Not had to call on that very much. Let's go down to Alex. I had a chance to catch up with Jefferson Fritz and asked him about his playing career here. He's been a captain all four years. I asked him about his leadership style. He said he's not really a rah-rah guy. He likes to lead by example, show how to put in the hard work and how the results will, will make a difference. No, there's no doubt this kid is, is special. Defensive coordinator Larry Harmon said he, he wouldn't be surprised if, if he was the, the, you know, the first kid picked in grade school at everything, you know, from from you know playing uh, you know gym class to, to golf or whatever it may be. Guy's just a competitor. You play gym class? You couldn't come up with a game at tether ball, ball kickball, ball, 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 dodge ball, no, map ball, right? No. I know Matt Austin, our rules analyst. I don't, Matt know, Ball, I don't know Matt Ball. Maybe Matt Ball's an Ohio thing. Like, <laughs> put, put, it's, it's basically kickball inside a gym. You put mats in the corners, and you just... Are those the bases? Put the bases, yeah. Oh, it's called Matt Ball. Never played Matt Ball? No, i played kickball plenty of times. Okay, well, it's, maybe it's an Ohio thing. We need to work on your naming conventions there. <laughs> I'm Mike Cousins. He's Dustin Fox. Tweet the Mike, if you know what Matt Ball is. Former Ohio State and NFL defensive back. And... Uh, Alex Chapel down on the field, braving the elements tonight. With a little bit of rain coming down. All things considered, though, it's been for, great for this time of year. Oh, yeah. Oof, you can have a foot of snow. It starts snowing in October here, and sometimes it goes until May. This yes. is great. This it, is summer. It, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and I'm jealous of you. You get to go to Charlotte tomorrow. <laughs> hey, it could be in the 60s. Break out my shorts. Inside of 10 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Lanin gets flushed out of the pocket. He finds Kaminsky at midfield. And it looked like Dustin on that interception he threw on the last drive. It was a miscommunication between him and his top wide receiver. Yeah, I, you know, Kaminsky kind of runs a little stick route. And I think he thought he was going to move like inside on more of a, right. like a dig. And, and obviously he throws the pick to, to Micah Hackett. And I mean, Hackett was the easiest pick of his career. And it's a tremendous credit to the crew defense as well to slow down an offense that led the nation yeah. averaging 55 points a game. Well, it, what's amazing is, you know, I, I said early on, and I, I'll admit I was wrong. I, I thought this would be a low-scoring game, kind of grind it out. Both teams can run the football. Didn't think there'd be a lot of big plays. I, I was wrong, and, and I, I give Mary Hart and Baylor all the credit in the world. They, they've got some serious dudes at wide receiver, and their quarterback's legit. I mean, they, they came into this game, and not to take anything away from what North Central has, has done, um, but Mary Hart and Baylor's the better football team. They just are. 
If you didn't think there would be big plays, K.J. Miller, Brenton Martin certainly had something to say about that. And Brandon Jordan, who last week went off for 164 yards and two touchdowns, relatively speaking, has been kept in check with great defensive work from Jake Beasley. But those other two guys have really picked up the slack. That would have been a tough grab with a big hit coming for D'Angelo Hardy yeah, had he gone on to that. coming across the middle, Mike, and he was ready to deliver. But here's the thing, you can't really do that anymore. So if you're a wide receiver, I mean, if you take this, this pass and, and know you're going to get hit, it's going to be a flag. Not when I played, Mike, when I had to walk to school in the snow. Uphill both ways, both ways. with no shoes on. That's right. Your book's bound by a leather strap. <laughs> that's, a, that's a touchdown. Yep, Lane and up the sideline, hits Blake Williams, North Central, with a much needed touchdown. Stop of the clock at 747, and they make it a 20 point game on a 30 yard connection to the senior from Aurora, Illinois. It's a good throw, really good throw. Kind of go, he looks like he, he was looking to his left, comes back in through his progression. Great concentration. Bowden comes over and delivers the hit. But Blake Williams is, is able to, to haul that in and yeah, gives you a little life, right? Eight minutes to go, 20 points. We've seen crazier things happen. Got a couple timeouts. Remember, they did take the one timeout because of the illegal substitution. But uh, maybe onside kick looming? I would. There's only one way to find out. Stay with us. That's right. The NCAA Division II Championship will be crowned tomorrow night. Champion will be crowned tomorrow night in McKinney, Texas, ESPNU, 9 Eastern. It's Valdosta State and Ferris State. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, the numbers will tell you one story, and what it's here to tell you is look out because you're probably going to see some points on the board. Although tonight, in this game, we thought with really strong defenses, yeah. low scoring game. Yeah, two defenses give up about 10 points per game, and I, I, I'm very surprised that we've got 67 points on the board. And we've got North Central after the timeout. Set up for the onside kick, Tanner Reigns. And that ball was touched before it went 10 yards by North Central. And that's why the flag is down the 34-yard line. He might have been offside. Offside, yeah. A possibility. Good call, Tim. Our spotter doing a terrific job tonight. Help us out in the booth, along with the rest of our crew. Well, there's two penalties there. He was offside, and it hit, it hit him before he went 10 yards. As we wait on the call here from Stuart Hinman, they figure out exactly all the penalties here. We've got our rules analyst, Matt Austin. What's this conversation like right now? Well, I think you're right. I think they did have offsides on the kicking team. The illegal touching, it's not a foul. It's, it's just a Offside. violation. Kicking team, number 21. That five-yard penalty will be added to the recovery spot. First down, Mary Harden-Baylor. Yeah, and that's what the that's what the discussion was about. You can't take the penalty from the spot of illegal touching. You have to take it from the where you possess the ball. So I'm sure that's what they were just getting the art line correct. Matt, if not for the offsides penalty and just the, if there were illegal touching, how would the play proceed from there? Uh, the receiving team would have taken the ball at the spot of illegal touching. Matt Austin, our rules analyst, makes it so much easier for us. Well, it certainly eliminates the, the, the possibility of us saying something dumb. Pride of Big Rapids, by the way, <laughs> we found out. He knows just how cold it can get there. The further north you go in Michigan, just pack your boots and your car hard. I did, did a Ferris State game a couple <laughs> years ago, and I, I had the, the biggest uh, Ugg boots on you could find. Put it that way.
7.15 to go, fourth quarter. Look at the disparity between yardage tonight. You know what, Dustin, it was, what, around 100 yards and coming, coming out of the half, and it's only grown here in the fourth. And at least here over a couple of snaps, more attention to the ground game. Well, we got your anecdote very early on in the night about winning the national championship at Ohio State. You're along the sideline here. This is a pretty wide gap on the scoreboard. How do you contain your excitement knowing what's imminent? I don't think you can. I mean, you, if you're Mary Hart and Baylor, you know what's coming. You know, my game was was in 2002 against Miami and went to double overtime. Not quite the and same. Not <laughs> a, li a little different, and, and came down to a big penalty and you know a couple of huge plays late. I mean, it's. Uh, I would have much rather been in this situation. Put it that way. Yeah. To know. Mary Hart. To know what's looming and and now. like have a no doubter. And, and Mary Harden Baylor, I, I give them all the credit in the world. They, they brought it tonight, and they took a, a strong punch from North Central. I, you know, there in the second quarter, when when it was a two-point, actually they had the lead, 17-16 uh, for a moment until the final drive when they go down to get a field goal and take the lead 19-17 at halftime. But it, it was uh, was a, was a strong blow from from the Cardinals, and the crew just. Frankly, I, I, I kind of think they out-athleted them a little bit, especially on the outside with their wide receivers. And Alex, for some of the teammates for Mary Hart and Baylor, you could say that this night, this moment has been a lifetime in the making. It has been. You can say that again, Mike. Yes, having a chance to catch up with Gary Ruckman earlier this week. He loves playing with his younger brother, Ethan. Gary is a tight end. Ethan is, on the, uh, is an offensive lineman. You can see them as youngsters, how it started for the two brothers, and now tonight, how it's going. They're on their way to becoming national champions together, but he's just pumped to play with his brother. He said, sometimes it's fun when we get to block the same guy. Great stuff, Alex. I mean, I, I can't, uh, my older brother was uh, you know, my hero growing up as, well, another touchdown, my goodness. Aaron Sims with a touchdown catch. That's from 37 yards out, and just when I think everybody in the building thought another run was coming, they say, you know what? Let's air it out. Wow. And that's only the 13th catch of the year for Sims. We saw Where do these wide receivers come from? We saw Jamal Hamilton earlier make just his fifth catch of the year. And there is no shortage of enthusiasm from these two fan bases throughout the week One of the tweets that we got that stood out was one guy who said look at the roster Look how many players there are there's over a hundred listed on the roster because it's yeah. JV and varsity It means so much to these guys to be up at this level with the varsity program and especially here If you've caught four passes 12 passes throughout the course of the regular season This is the 15th game of the year and the biggest catch of the year uh, and, and for Sims He's a senior Cameron, Texas, 13th catch of the year, third touchdown of the year. That touchdown, he will never forget. For the rest Save of his that life. ball. Save that ball. Back at Hall of Fame Stadium after yet another Mary Harden Baylor touchdown. This time they find Aaron Sims for the touchdown catch. Mike Cousins, Dustin Fox, Alex Chapel, Matt Austin, and a crisp but cool and now rainier than ever evening in Northeast Ohio. And it's now appearing to be just a matter of minutes before it's yet another national championship for the Crusaders of Mary Harden Baylor. I was gonna say, how cool is that shot to see the Hall of Fame peeking over the North stands? Just an incredible experience, Mike, to, to, for these kids to play here in, in, in this environment and you know have a chance to, to tour the Hall of Fame and do all these great things. It's a uh, it's special. I'm really, as, as a Northeast Ohio native and, and Stark County, uh, you know, grew up in Stark County, I should say, uh, it, proud, proud that Stag Bulls come here and it's, uh, it's pretty cool for these kids.
Lanin falls on top of the ball that scored it right between his hands. Yet, this is not for most people. You know, if you're if you live in Northeast Ohio, you may become a Northeast Ohio defender of Cleveland, of Canton, of Akron. <laughs> yeah. Why do people here love football so much? I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, they, listen, they love football in Texas. They love football in Illinois. They love football in Wisconsin. They love, they love football everywhere. But the fact that the Hall of Fame is here, the birthplace of football, uh, so many great players come from Northeast Ohio. And, and this, I mean, this is the mecca of the National Football League. So, uh, again, not to knock any other region or anything like that. I mean, this is just a really cool place. I uh, had a chance to grow up here in, in Canton and, you know, be just a couple miles down the road from the Hall of Fame. Uh, the, 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 I'm telling you, I played in the stadium. It didn't look like this. It is unbelievable the job that they've done and the renovations you know, still continue with the Hall of Fame Village and and all the things and this is just a wild right now. The ball got loose again. Zach Fortier, the left tackle, was the first on the scene to try and get it. And it's finally scooped up. Sharmore Clark, one of the standouts along that offensive line, was able to recover it. And we, you know, we really didn't get to talk about him very much. The offensive lineman of the yeah, year in their league. Player. Three times he's won that award. He's the only player to ever have won it as it's only been handed out That's for right. three years. Just a tremendous player. And you can see that that is raw emotion, Mike. You know, from a, from a guy. Just raw emotion. And, and there's no doubt that the pain is felt on that north central sideline because you know, and again, I mean, these guys, a lot of them were national champions a couple years ago, but there's nothing like this. And that's Division Three football, Mike. I mean, it, you can feel his teammates feel it, and he is, he knows now. This opportunity as, as he's, he's a senior is over. And all of that comes on top of not knowing what things were going to be like in summer of 2020 going into a fall of 2020 without a season. Great point. We'll see all of the exuberance, the joy, the celebration from Mary Harden Baylor with our trophy ceremony here on ESPNU and wherever you are on the ESPN app as well. I think that's something that really can get lost under the radar because so much of our attention throughout the course of the year, if you are not locked into what's going on the Division Three level, last year we saw, oh, there are cancellations. Life is really difficult. You know what was really difficult? Not having a season. Right. That makes it even harder to have to come back and then maybe have a spring season or central chose not to play in the spring season took those practices and, instead and again on top of all of this mike we're talking about non-scholarship athletes the, these young men play for the love of the game they don't have to play football i mean they, they could go somewhere else a lot of a lot of guys choose because they love football so much to come play for these universities and well, another good throw and catch on the outside and Brenton Martin hauls that one in. 27 yards for Martin, who's been an integral part of this offense today. The lead is 26, and the crew are enthusiastic about picking up chunks of yardage, and it appears putting more points on the board. Well, it, probably not making a lot of friends on the North Central sideline right now. You know, there's Ryan Redding, who played Started a few games uh, earlier this season for the crew. Did a great job, too. Threw for almost 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, no picks. He can run, too. He bounces to the outside, picking up the block from Gary Ruckman, the tight end, and gets twisted into the turf by Dakota Cremins. What a day for that young man. A day that he, Kyle King, We'll never forget. 22 of 29, 436 yards and three touchdowns against a defense that allowed 235 yards a game and 11 points a game. Just got it done. Loved his moxie. This is a two point game at halftime. <laughs> I mean, at 250 yards at halftime, Mike. I mean, it was incredible first half. 
Uh, but, you know, 20, so you mentioned the stats, 22-29, three touchdowns, no picks. I mean, the guy's only thrown two interceptions this entire season. I'll tell you, if you're a Mary Harden Baylor fan, you, you will never forget this night. This is a no-doubter. And those who know somewhere out west in the Pacific time zone basically said, we're shrugging our, our hands. We don't know who's going to win this game. You and I didn't know. <laughs> Vegas had it as a pick -up. That's the fun of it. And and no one knew. I mean, in this, the, it, you're right. It is the fun of it. And you come into the game like this, and, and that's not to say North Central couldn't win if they played again. But on a night, this is the only night that matters. Less than a minute to go now. Redding still on the attack. His throw rolls away over toward the sideline. The clock stops with 50 seconds to go. So you dive into the history of Mary Harden Baylor in the postseason and in the Stag Bowl. They got there in 2004. They lost by seven. They got their first national title, or as it stands, the only one at the moment, according to the NCAA, in 2018 with a win over Mount Union. They won it in 2016. They lost it in 2017. Those trips to the title game, those postseasons, were later vacated by the NCAA. So they'll add another to their tally tonight. And like you said, the memories forged tonight oh. will never go away. Yeah, the first Stag Bowl in Canton. I mean, an opportunity to play here at the Hall of Fame Stadium, and they're just going to attack on more, Mike. Winning without mercy. Going to the backup quarterback in the championship game. Ryan Redding throws the touchdown, his 10th of the year, as Kyle King, the starter at that same position, cheers him on from the sideline. Well, I'll say this. If you're a North Central Cardinal player and you're coming back next season, you won't forget this, Mike. I mean, this is, uh, no, but I think, I mean, the crew, the crew players know that if they see him again, it's not going to be till the postseason. Likely here. So it'd, it'd, <laughs> it'd be a while. Well, they, well, they got to get through the, the white waters and the Mount Union. That's right. Again, the, the, you know, the, the, the tough opponents. I mean, there's a lot of really good D3 programs, but uh, uh, lately it's been uh, Mary Hart and Baylor in, in North Central. North Central de defending the national championship from 2019. No championship last year with the COVID year. And now Mary Hart and Baylor comes out here and boy, they, for Division Three fans, if you don't know who Mary, or if, if you're, excuse me, if you're not a Division Three fan, if you're just like tuning into the game because you love football, this Mary Harden Baylor program is legit. And it, it is le as legit as it comes. They modeled themselves after Mount Union. And now they've reached the, the, the pinnacle, uh, the peak of the mountain. They've, they've toppled them. And now they're going to have themselves another national championship. Their second in four seasons. As they're appearing in the Stag Bowl for the fourth time in five post seasons. Feel for those young men. I said in the open, no one's going to forget this night. Someone's going to remember it a little bit more fondly than the other team, and we know who that team is. That's the crew. What a great nickname, too, by the way. I love, I love that nickname. Really cool. Well, if everything's bigger in Texas, I suppose that includes margins of victory as well. I think it's fair <laughs> that some may question their tactic at the end of the game to continue scoring points with the outcome of the game not in question. Some will say, well, if you can't stop it, you can't stop it. There are arguments to be made 
from both perspectives. No doubt. But there is no argument that tonight, in the second half especially, Mary Harden Baylor, the 2021 Division III National Football Champions, were the better team. No doubt, Mike. They, they played their tails off tonight. And it, it, it got close in, in the second quarter. But in the third quarter, they pull away. Too many athletes on the outside. Too many mistakes from North Central. Turnovers. Costly. Love the sportsmanship, though. I, I, I really love this. This is, this is old school. Shaking hands in midfield. That's great. I, I love seeing that. Big time.